What's up, Pokemon TCG players? Uh, I'm just gonna start this off real quick with a quick little gift or whatever. It's been a while since I've done these, so. All right, so this deck is basically a Hoopa GX deck. Um, he's your main attacker. And just a quick look, if you haven't seen him before. Basically, Rogue Ring uh, lets you look for any two cards you want, so it's quite convenient. Dark Strike is what you're attacking with, 160, plus the choice band, 190. It does a quite a good amount of damage. Plus, um, if you have Devour Field out, that's another 10, that's 200. Uh, Devilish Hands is pretty cool. Um, I'm really crazy about spread decks, and Devilish Hands allows you, it's not dropping damage counters, but it allows you to attack, what was it, six times? Yeah, six times, 30 each time, so, you could snipe uh, the bench or whatever, but it has to be a, a GX or EX or whatever. So, um, who puts your main attacker? Your backup, your engine basically is Macargo GX and non GX Macargo. So, you're never really going to attack with this because we don't have the fire energy, but Crushing Charge is super cool when it's paired up with Smooth Over. So, you've probably seen Smooth Over in a lot of decks before, but basically, they pair up perfectly. So, what you do is, you uh, Smooth Over for a basic energy card, mainly a Dark or whatever, and then you just Crushing Charge, and it allows you to put it on any of your Pokemon, not just your bench, any Pokemon. So, it could be a Hoopa GX up in the front in the active, right? So, what else do we have here? We have Zora GX... He's just kind of like a second attacker and also um, an engine as well because trade the trade ability is super good just because you just get what you need and it pairs up super well with smooth over so you're gonna want immediately your Macargo GX and non GX Macargo out so you can power up your Hoopo GX but if you happen to have a third Macargo out particularly smooth over and you happen to have a Zoroark GX out, you basically get whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as you have enough to trade or whatever. So the whole point of the deck is get whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as you're set up properly. Uh, what else? Zoro's here, obviously, for the Zoroark. Tapu Koko, I really like just spread decks, like I said before, but um, he's good when you're doing a Guzma in and out or whatever. He's a free retreater, so he's super good to have just out on the bench. Just one is good. And then I've noticed testing this deck a bunch of times, Tapu Koko is just excellent against that Lost March deck or whatever it's called. It's just it's just amazing. You just keep flying flipping until you beat that deck. That's kind of the answer for that. Uh, Onyx, <clears throat> he was kind of a last addition. I didn't really like him at first, but then when I noticed everybody plays Zoro GX, you do Land Crush times two, that's 240, that's enough to one-shot one of these Zoroarks, which has a weakness to fighting. So that's pretty good. And then this next card complements a lot of things. EV and Snorlax GX, besides the fact that this card alone can just beat up people or whatever. Um, cheer up it, it says attach an energy card from your hand to one of your other pokemon so if you start off with this dude and you have a dce and you just happen to have maybe a dark energy card cheer up boom power up your even snorlax or another dce he's ready to go also cheer up can help onyx to get set up or whatever you could set up with Macargo. i mean you could cheer up to like hoopa gx and stuff like that but I haven't found myself doing that mostly. Um, honestly, Dump Truck Press is amazing. To Evolution Pokemon, which there's a ton of, it does another 120, so that's 240. Let alone if you have a like, choice band, then you'll be going for 56 to 70. 270, that's, that's tag team ranges, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty good. Megaton, friends, uh, it's a good heavy hitter. I don't use it that much, but it's, it's good if you have basically five energies um 210 and then you get 10 it's a good little setup but i haven't used it much honestly i usually mostly stick to 
devilish hands just because it's like sniping whatever like I noticed I could just like snipe a tapu lele just real quick get a quick knockout um obviously tapu lele just to look for supporters early game and and whatnot <clears throat> then you got your Cynthia I'm trying to go for consistency which I'm not really used to but I have four Cynthia's it's just it's just like pretty common you uh, shuffle your hand and draw six it's all good um, I'm not a fan of Lily so I just didn't want to use her um, Guzma I use four just because it wins games Guzma wins games point blank uh, Tate and Liza the reason why Tate and Liza is so important in this deck is that Koopa GX's Dark Strike, right? Um, once you use it, you can't use it again the next turn. You could still use Devilish hand, Hands the next turn, or Rogue Ring, so that's cool. But, like, if you want to, you know, reset it or whatever, Tate and Liza, maybe get Tapu Koko up in the front, then retreat out, whatever, no big deal. Acerola is super important. Acerola basically, you know, once you're in a bind or whatever, especially with the EV Snorlax, you don't want to get uh, your opponent to get three prizes off of you. You get that Acerola and get out of danger. Judge is good just for disruption. A good one of is cool. Um, you judge, you know, turn one when your opponent has the lead and messes them up or whatever. Or, I don't know. You judge them once they, I don't know, use Alolan Ninetales and get the cards what they want. Anytime they basically get something that they wanted, you use Judge. Just disrupt it. Four Ultra Balls, sticking to consistency. Uh, two Nest Balls. The reason why I put Nest Balls is that turn one, I just want to focus on getting Slugma out. I just want immediately two slugs two slugmas out idealistically a hoopa and two slugmas so the next turn you could just simply rogue ring get macargo gx and macargo out get them out boom next turn you're ready to go you have your engine ready and all that jazz so two nest balls just to get the slugmas out uh you got a rescue stretcher you know just to get like whatever you need back in the deck Mainly the Macargo GX and non GX Macargo, just because they're so important to this deck. Field Blower, just to get rid of, um, you know, like your Shrine of Punishment or whatever, you know? Switch is super important, just pairs up with Tate and Liza. You just want to go in and out with the whole Dark Strike to reset it. Black Market is so important in this deck. So if you read carefully, Black Market doesn't necessarily mean. Hey, I have a dark Pokemon. It got knocked out. You only take one. It has to have a dark energy on to it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So if you have a Zorark and you have a DCE on that Zorark, if you really want to save that Zorark from going from two prizes to one prize, just slap another dark energy on it. Or just power it up with two dark energies. You can use Trickster GX to copy somebody else's GX move anyway, so that's pretty good. But just remember, when you're using Black Market... The dark Pokemon won't be saved unless they have a dark energy. Devoured Field, honestly, I didn't really want it, but I just needed another counter stadium to take off other stadiums because these prisms cannot be taken off with Field Blower. So I needed another stadium to take it off. So to counter it or whatever. Choice Bands is uh, two is just enough. It's good with the uh, Dark Strike 190. You're hitting good numbers or whatever. Even Zorak GX, you know, it's just good. Or when you're using it, I really love using it with Tapu Koko, because when you're doing Flying Flip and your opponent's active Pokemon is a GX, you're hitting for 50 each time. So it's pretty cool, especially if they're weak to Lightning, because there's a couple Pokemon out there right now that's weak to Lightning. You're doing 100 each time. It's ridiculous. 50 times 2. Four DCEs, powering up the Zorark, powering up the Eevee and Snorlax, Tapu Lele if necessary. The Onyx, the Coco, so 4 DC is definitely a must. And then just a standard 10 Dark Energies, you know, it's pretty good. But here's another code card. Thanks for making it this far, guys. And here's another one, just as a cool thank you. I hope you guys enjoy this deck. Uh, it's by no means a Tier 1 deck, but it's a lot of fun. I would probably call it a Tier 2 deck. 
it's got me like I think like second place in LC no big deal but it's really fun and if you like spread decks and hey this is a cool deck but thanks for watching guys see you later